What's up guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to another Tech Gear review. Today we are going to be reviewing Cooler Master's Mini ITX case, the NR200P, where we will be showcasing our new Galaxy G Force RTX 3070. So in this review, we will be showing you what this Mini ITX case can do, take you through a quick build exploring various setups that you can adopt, following which we will discuss some afterthoughts. So let's go. So out of the box, this is what we get. Needless to say, we have the PC case that comes with the tempered glass panel on the side. It also comes with an extra side panel, which can replace the tempered glass panel here. And, and this. So let's just see what it comes in. It. So it so in the box, it comes with two single flow fans. I think that's for the top mount of the case. And of course, you have the usual cables and stuff. And it comes with this. So this is a PCIe 3.0 GPU riser cable, which Cooler Master have packed in the box for vertical GPU installation. Now let's put everything away and go back to the case. So this is an 18 litre mini ITX case. You are looking at 360 by 185 by 274 millimeters, which is really very nicely sized and will take up so much less footprint on the desk. So the NR200P is basically its twin the NR200, except that it comes with a tempered glass side and of course the PCIe 3.0 GPU riser cable pretty much that's the difference okay let me remove the glass panel so that we can have a better look inside put this away so if you look at the frame the panels all around these are powder coated steel mind you they're not aluminium they are steel Cooler Master definitely didn't cut any corners here. So this case is available in black or white. In this case, I have gotten the black one. Both of which sports a very matte look, which gives it a very classy, minimalist and sleek kind of feel to it. If you ask me, I simply adore this material. It looks, let me put it against the light for you to see. It looks extremely durable. In fact, almost scratch proof. And if you had gone for the NR200 model without the tempered glass panels, you won't even have fingerprints on it. On the top front of the case, you have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A jacks here. Of course, the on-off button and a 3.5 mm headset jack. So the NR200P is a very popular mini ITX case, known for its thermal efficiency with its generous ventilation holes. Here you can see my hand almost through it. You have the ventilation holes at the side panels, at the top, bottom, at the rear, and there is wire mesh everywhere with the exception of the rear. So these wire mesh are magnetically attached. Let me just show you briefly. And um, it is so for all the panels that you can find the mesh on. Although I do feel that these mesh dust filters can be made of higher density so that it can be more efficient in keeping the PC clean. The best part of this PC case is that all its external panels in this case are secured with pins for easy removal. You can literally strip it down to its bones which makes working inside the chases much easier without the need for tools. As the first step for our PC build, let's start with the teardown. So the next part comes the easiest part of this PC build. The NR200 is compatible with the Mini ITX and Mini DTX motherboards. And for this build, we are using the Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, attaching the best value for performance Ryzen 5 3600 CPU and Corsair's Vengeance LPX 32GB 3200MHz RAM. 
Once that's done, we install the motherboard into the case. So for most PC builds, I would suggest that you mount any backplates or additional mounts for the AIO cooler on the motherboard before you install the motherboard into the case. Otherwise, you may have to remove the motherboard from the case later on in order to install the AIO cooler. But with the NR200P or NR200, this is not the case anymore. If you look at this, is the back of the PC case. You have a full exposure to the back of the motherboard. If you have to mount any backplate as a result of installing the air cooler, you can do it easily like that. Now for storage, I have installed a Western Digital Black SN750 NVMe SSD in the motherboard and that should be sufficient for my build for now. I will not be adding any further SSD or HDD in this case. But if need be, this case has a total of four drive bays. You can have two of the SSD mounts hidden in the front panel, one SSD or HDD on top of the power cage, or mount a hard drive on the removable fan mount system, provided you're not going for a vertical GPU setup. So if you're using liquid cooling or air cooling for your CPU in your NR200P build, do note that the available space for CPU cooler is up to 155 millimeters in height. For AIO cooler, I am using ID Cooling's Auraflow 240 mm which has got RGB fans as well as is a great value for performance. Now before you react to the position of my AIO cooler radiator, please hold for a minute and hear me out. So how you choose to mount your GPU in the NR200P case will have a direct impact on where you can mount the radiator of your AIO cooler. So if you plan to mount your GPU horizontally, over here, you have the option of a 92mm rear radiator over on the side or you could have the radiator mounted horizontally using the removable bracket uh, that comes along with the case on this side where you can take 120mm up to 280mm. However, if you are going to be using the tempered glass panel, then this setup is totally visually not acceptable for me. That said, if you were to mount your GPU vertically, your only option for radiator is at the bottom of this case. This is how Cooler Master has designed this case. I tried to fit it at the top. It doesn't fit. There's not enough space for both a fan and the radiator. And if you swear by radiators needing to be higher than the ARO cooler, and if you want that tempered glass look to showcase some RGB lighting on your desk, then this setup will be very, very hard for you to deal with. Finally, for me, I am weak. I will go for aesthetic anytime. Do not judge me. I have got a brand new Galaxy G Force RTX 3070 SG that I am using in this PC build and I really really want to showcase my new graphic card. So the solution I settled for is to get a cheap AIO cooler. Until I can find a smarter solution, I am just going to go ahead with this. For power supply, we are going with the newly launched Cooler Master SFX750, which is also available in 850, 650, and 550 watts. The VSFX Gold Series is Cooler Master's debut entry into SFX power supply units and has an 80 plus gold efficiency rating, full modular cabling, and a 92mm FTB fan. It also comes accompanied with an SFX to ATX bracket so that your power supply unit becomes more portable over time. So look at the size, it fits in one hand and of course you can't see me flexing my biceps. Let's just get this quickly into the case. Next, we'll also install those Sikaflow fans into the top panel right now. This is relatively quick and easy based on how Cooler Master has designed this. Just click it in. And given how compact and snugly everything will be inside this case, these grills here really help to block out cables from coming into contact and restricting the fan flow. Now we take a moment to plug in all the cables into the motherboard as well as plug in all PSU cables. If you have opted for the same Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard as I have for this case, I am marking out all the points on the motherboard to connect cables to. That should help fast forward this step for you. So for graphics card installation, we have discussed this before. You have an option of a horizontal mount here where it can support up to three slot graphic cards with a maximum length of 330mm and 156mm in width or for a vertical mount using the included PCIe GPU riser cable for two slot GPUs. Here today in our build, I'm going to be using the 
Galaxy G Force RTX 3070 SG. So it looks very much similar to its bigger brother, the RTX 3080, which I am using in my main gaming PC. I do have a PC build video on the Galaxy RTX 3080, as well as the Galaxy RTX 3080 SG review video. They're both on my channel. You will be able to find them there under the Gaming Gears playlist. For now, I'm just so excited to be building with the RTX 3070 here into my sleek and classy mini ITX case. I will also be putting up a review video on the Galaxy GeForce RTX 3070 Series Gamer, which will be coming up very, very shortly. So do subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified when it's released. Okay, enough talking. Let's get this into this. Et voila, we are finally finished. This is our latest PC build with the NR200P. Pardon the uncoordinated RGB as we haven't installed any drivers to make that change. But the vertical GPU with the radiator at the bottom is just so awesome. All in all, I really like the NR200 with or without the P. It is absolutely solid. Nothing about it feels flimsy or cheap. And the modularity of it makes it so small and yet so spacious to fit some of the biggest GPUs in a horizontal mount. Well, I also like how Cooler Master has designed this PC case with the upgraders in mind. If you prefer to use your existing ATX power supply unit instead of getting a brand new SFX power supply unit for this case, Cooler Master allows you to 3D print your ATX power supply bracket suitable for this case. However, to note that once you do that, the space left within the case for components will then be compromised. Well, I didn't feel that it was a big deal to get a brand new SFX power supply unit for this case, given the fact that when I decided to string to a mini ITX, I almost expected to get a smaller power supply unit as well as a motherboard in order to shift towards a mini ITX build. In the ITX space, the NR200 and NR200P has outperformed several other mini ITX case, which are a lot more expensive. At the price point of 79 US dollars for the NR200 and 99 US dollars for the NR200P, I'd say that Cooler Master really nailed this one. If you're considering the ITX form factor for your next PC build or upgrade, don't hesitate to pick this one. In any case, let me know in the comments below what you think of this PC build as well as this mini ITX case. Or if you have any queries with regards to this case, happy to discuss and clarify. Once again, thanks so much for watching this review. Please do give us a like if you've enjoyed this and subscribe to our channel if you've not already done so. And if you have, thank you and I will see you in the next one.